This video is all about hydrology and in particular looking at porosity. It's the ability for a rock material to hold water and in this video we're looking at the different types of porosity, how porosity forms inside the rock and where the water comes from to fill up the spaces in the rock. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So we're looking at hydrology as a scientific discipline and porosity is a term within this field of science that refers to the amount of space, percentage of space within a rock material that can be filled with either air or water. And in this case for hydrology, which is all about water, we're looking at that space being filled with water. Now the amount of space in that rock is given as a percentage and this is the porosity and a porous rock can hold water and air a non-porous rock has a limited amount of transferring water within its rock material and this could be based on the composition of the rock with the minerals the way it forms in terms of the strata and bedding and also the amount of stress that the rock is going under within the ground which can create cracks and fractures and voids and cavities and space as well so either the rock has space which can be filled with water which is porosity or it doesn't which is non-porous so as porosity is the amount or percentage of available space in between the rock particles the mineral particles the grains of that rock you can see on these two diagrams a very simple comparison between a porous rock which has more space in between the rock particles and rock material and a non-porous which has less or limited or even zero space between the rock particles. Again, this is based on the formation, the depth, because depth will dictate the amount of pressure that the rock is under, which is called lithostatic pressure and also the amount of organic material, the organic processes, and also weathering and erosion can affect the amount of porosity and space within each rock. So on the left we have a rock that has a lot of space and the air and potential for water to fill the gaps and space within the rock material. Then on the right we have a non-porous which is again less space available for any water to fill any gaps and if they do fill gaps it is hard to transfer water down between these rock spaces through gravity. So as in geology and the formation of different rocks you have the sedimentary rock, igneous rock and metamorphic rock. Each of these rocks are formed in different sequences, different environments and locations and over different time spans and can range in the composition from sediments that are clastic or chemical with sedimentary to heat and pressure applied at depths which is metamorphic and different grades to the cooling and consolidation and forming crystals and minerals of the magma and lava cooling to form igneous rocks. So these rock types are going to form different kinds of rocks with their own characteristics and obviously their own amount or range of space in between the rock particles which has the ability to hold water which is the porosity. So in terms of the best or porous rocks that are, are available or naturally occur on the Earth's surface and Earth's crust is going to be the sedimentary. Now sedimentary is two-thirds or even up to 75% of the Earth's surface is sedimentary. So there is a great deal of these kind of rocks that have a high porosity compared to a metamorphic or an igneous. Now the other range to consider is if the rock is unconsolidated, which means loose materials packed together, or is it consolidated, which is solid. If it's a solid rock, it will have generally less porosity and less space than a rock that is unconsolidated. It's like a conglomerate or a breccia. Then you have the fractured or non-fractured. So if a rock is broken, fractured due to tectonics, mass wasting, or weather and erosion, then a fractured rock will have a higher porosity generally than a non-fractured rock. So rocks like limestone are very high up into porosity range, which goes from zero up to 70%. 
Now the general porosity of rocks is between 20 and 30 percent across the Earth's surface. So you get in a rock that's up to 70 percent, that is way higher than the average. For example, glacial till, which is unconsolidated, has a small range of porosity between 10 and 20. Mudstone and sandstone are higher, up to 30 percent. And you have the fractured igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks that can be up to 40 or 50 percent. So it all comes down to a range of factors and characteristics of the rock which will dictate the range of porosity that rock material has. The definition of porosity is the amount or percentage of available space within the rock material that can hold water, which is what we're looking at in hydrology, and in this case, groundwater. So water under the surface, subsurface water. Now, porosity comes in two types based on when and how and where the space in the rock occurs. Now, primary porosity is where the rock is formed and naturally has, based on its rock type and location, environment and formation, the this primary porosity is there innate. It's there from the starting point of the rock's formation and it has that given amount of porosity within that rock material. Secondary porosity is all different. A rock can be changed and have an increase in porosity if certain conditions exist on that rock over time. So that rock goes through some sort of tectonic changes, or mass movement, or large amounts of weather and erosion on the surface. It can form cracks and fractures and be broken down, which would then increase the surface area and increase weather and erosion, and then obviously increase exponentially the amount of fractures, space, and joints and bedding planes within that rock, which will allow more space and therefore have a higher porosity, which is the potential for holding more water at that depth and in that certain rock. So primary is starting out with the rock with the basic porosity level. Secondary is a change to that rock structure, which will allow more space within the rock, which will allow a higher porosity. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.